Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game and a very nice story about um, a, a six-year-old girl from India. She could be seven now, but the games are from when she was six years old as this is the under seven championship uh, called Sh uh, Sharvanika. Um, uh, interestingly, I've seen an interview uh, with her with Shagar Shah from Chess Base India and he, he calls her uh, Sharvanika, but then he asks her uh, w w what's it actually pronounced uh, and she says Sharvanika and then he just continues calling her Sharvanika. So I, I don't really understand how how that works uh, but I'm gonna do it as she she says so uh, I'm gonna uh, call her Sharvanika and also uh, interesting uh, story I, I thought okay th there's no way I'm gonna find a photo of her opponent because okay Sharvanika's photo was published by Chess Base India uh, but not only does uh, uh, Kiana here uh, have a photo of herself online uh, she also already has a YouTube channel so if you guys are interested in following her progress uh, I will put a link to her YouTube channel also in the description below uh, with the uh, article to the Chess Base India India's channel. Now, uh, what I found interesting, and uh, I usually find these stories on Twitter where, uh, you know, there's a whole lot about chess. Uh, Shagar Shah uh, uh, published it and saying that uh, Sharvanika is a 100% um, uh, girl from India, saying that she wins all of her events with 100%, uh, saying that she won the, uh, uh, what's it called, in, in 2022, she won the Nationals Under-7 Championship uh, and also uh, with a score of 11 out of 11, and then she won uh, in, the, in Sri Lanka, the Asian School Championship, she won the uh, Under-7 Classical Tournament, she won the Under-7 Rapid Tournament, and she won the under seven blitz tournament all of them with 100 percent and you might think okay they are six years old uh, probably those games are not maybe the the most uh, top level games that we are used to and uh, chances are her opponents are just blundering pieces but if you are thinking that you could not be further from the truth uh, truth and this is one of the games that uh, i'm going to show you uh, it's an extremely top level game uh, it has a brilliant opening brilliant middle game and a brilliant finish to the game uh, so without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, so Sharvanika with the white pieces opens with d4. We have knight to f6 by Kiana, uh, c4, e6, knight to f3, and pawn to d5. So okay, the queen's gambit declined is on the board. g3, Sharvanika goes for the uh, the uh, Catalan opening. We have bishop to e7, and now bishop to g2. Both players castle, so castles, castles, and pawn to c6. Now this is all modern theory to the to the highest level knight b to d2 we have knight b to d7 and now queen to c2 nicely developing pieces putting them on optimal squares b6 preparing bishop to b7 and now pawn to e4 striking in the center d captures on c4 we have knight captures on c4 and bishop to b7 preparing to bring the rook to c8 and sharvanika still has to figure out where to develop the bishop maybe to e3 or to f4 or to g5 to get that rook to c1 or or maybe the rook will come to d1 this rook will come to e1 uh, all depends on uh, how the game uh, continues. So she goes rook to d1 first, which is also a very well-known move. Pawn to c5, striking in the center. We have knight f to e5, and this is where the uh, game takes the most interesting turn. Now, we are already at move 12, and for example, this uh, exact position was reached in 2020 in the Gibraltar Masters uh, between Martin Percivaldi and uh, Van Hao, who was, uh, I mean, a, a member of, of the candidates tournament. Uh, so, okay, knight captures an e5. And this is a new move that uh, has not been reached before. Uh, how you should play this and how the theory suggests you should play this is C captures on D5. And then rook captures on, uh, on D4 and then uh, queen to C7 and so on and so on. Black brings the rooks into the game. However, here knight captures on E5 was played, which seems like a good idea. Uh, but it allows white a very, very tricky maneuver. D captures on E5 and it seems like you're going to lose a piece because your queen and knight are hanging. But not really. Okay, black is fine here. Knight F to d7 and now queen to a4 sharvanika puts pressure on the knight here and bishop to c8 uh, just uh, nicely defending uh so what uh uh, what can you do here? Uh, interestingly, you don't uh, you don't really have to do this. You could also play queen to e8. It's uh, such a fun position. And now, for example, if rook captures uh, uh, here, just rook to d8, and you can't capture because uh, the the queen would hang. So even this is possible. Uh, but okay, bishop to c8 was played in the game. This allows white to uh, really put uh, white really put pressure on black. Bishop to f4. Sharvanika now, is, now wants to put a knight on d6. We have queen to c7, unpinning from the rook, and now 
knight to d6. We have rook to d8 and now rook a to c1. And here the problem is uh, if you go for knight captures on e5 and uh, Sharvanika mentions this during her interview with uh, Shagar Shah. Uh, she says that she saw if knight captures on e5 uh, that black can't really uh, uh, completely untangle here because after bishop captures on e5 and bishop captures on d6, rook captures on d6 and after rook captures bishop captures queen captures there is the very nice queen to e8 um uh, sorry not queen to e8 but uh, e5 uh just attacking the rook and the queen uh so that's uh, that that's uh, resigns for black so after rook 8 to c1 knight to f8 was played and now uh sharvanika gets a different idea that uh uh, sort of a sort of a trap for black bishop to e3 and now it seems like uh, you should be able to play this because there aren't any tricks and also the the d8 square will be covered if queen to e8 ever uh, wants to be played but uh here kiana still goes for bishop captures on d6 e captures on d6 rook captures on d6 but now it turns out it is all the same rook captures queen captures and pawn to e5 now attacking the queen and the undefended rook on, uh, on a8 but of course just just queen to b8 you will give up the exchange and then the black queen will control this long diagonal and with the light square bishop this could still pose a lot of problems for uh for white however you don't have to do this you could also play something else so feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for white uh while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, not grabbing the rook, as I already told you not to do that. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to c6. This is now winning a full piece as you cannot defend that rook. So uh, how do you how do you continue this? Uh, bishop to b7. You could, uh, of course, it's better to give up the bishop than the rook. Queen captures on b7. Queen captures, bishop captures, and now rook to d8. And okay, black will still fight. Uh, uh no point in resigning right away and uh, we're gonna skip this part of the game uh, because what's interesting is how uh, uh the game concludes okay white is still up a piece for the rest of the game some pawns will be traded some pawns will be captured and this is where the fun again starts a5 uh, you cannot capture because the rook would be uh, hanging on b2. c4, Kiana also starts advancing her passed pawn. a captures on b6, c3, and now bishop to e4. It seems like uh, you are guarding the uh, some squares, but not really. Pawn to c2, and here you can win this in two really, really cool ways, but... Um, uh, Sharvanika chooses a, a much cooler way so you could win this by simply capturing the pawn and you, your position is still winning let's say rook captures here and now you play rook to f8 and it doesn't matter what black does uh, you, you're still gonna win if you go rook to b2 then you're gonna uh, uh, win the f7 pawn if king to g8 rook to f6 goes after the pawns here and you will simply win this end game and also if rook to b2 isn't played if you go after the rook with something like king to g7 then just b7 and you either uh, take the rook and then the queen enters the game or you defend and then you have to give up a full rook so this is one way to do it with white uh, but she does it in a much uh, a more interesting way and instead of capturing she plays pawn to b7 uh, sorry rook to c8 and now uh, as, as it turns out uh, <laughs> there is really nothing you can do rook to b1 with check king to g2 and now c1 queen she allows uh, uh, kiana to bring her queen into the game but now look at this rook captures on c1 rook captures and now b7 showing that uh, the b1 square is defended by the bishop and of course the c8 square is defended by the pawn so there is no stopping that pawn from becoming a queen and okay the game concluded with rook to c4 uh, she got a queen into the game rook captures on e4 and she was able to uh, outmaneuver uh, her uh, w with a queen against the rook uh but yeah absolutely stunning stuff and i thought you you, you guys w would probably think that okay uh, they, they are six years old probably they're they're just playing nonsense moves and just uh, blundering pieces all over the place but as you've seen uh after after 13 moves a position that was reached in in in, in gibraltar and then you know very nicely concluded and even after this uh queen to b8 move not just going for some like bishop captures on a8 but also playing the the the, the, the perfect queen to c c6 also queen to e4 would have done the job uh but yeah absolutely stunning game and now uh now you know why and how she wins games and tournaments uh or <laughs> tournaments with uh, with a score of 100 percent she she plays uh you know brilliant chess. Yes.
Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and a uh, bit of um, uh, the story that I shared. I hope you enjoyed that. And also I wanted to mention, uh, I don't know if I already mentioned this, but uh, yeah, her coach is uh, this gentleman here. Uh, I'm just gonna try and find it. Uh, this is her coach, uh, uh, who also coaches um, uh, none other than Gukesh. So she is in very, very good hands. Uh, and uh, we can uh, probably expect a lot more from her in the future. There you have it, a nice uh, photo of her coach with uh, with Gukesh. Uh, I forgot his name, uh, as I uh, tend to forget names uh, <laughs> much more uh, than, than uh, I did. But yeah, uh, Grandmaster Vishnu Pras uh, Prasana. Uh, is is the name of the coach. Uh, he's uh, the co coach of the great Gukesh, and he is now coaching young uh, Sharvanika. So uh, not 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 at all uh, surprised that uh, she, she wins her uh, tournaments with one hundred percent. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that as well. Uh, I would like to thank Milos Knežević, Daniel Stone, uh, David Groskin, Teodoros uh, Katsimparos, and Scott Melis for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world uh, so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and do check out the entire article in the description below and also if you want kiana's youtube channel in the description below see you soon